Good morning church and welcome back to our devotions for this week um, as we continue in Numbers 22 and we are looking at a balmy Bible story. My name's Lola and I'm part of the pastoral team at Manchester Central. Um, if you haven't seen the previous videos do go back because we've gone through some of the characters in this story and today we are looking at another character and that character is a man named Balaam. And Balaam, um, his name actually means destroyer of the people. He is a prophet. He is a pagan sorcerer who is well known for being very effective at what he does. He curses people and they are cursed. He blesses people and they are blessed. And as we learned yesterday, also in this story is a man named Balak. And he is the king of Moab. He is intimidated and fearful of the children of Israel and he wants to put a curse on them. So what does he do? He elicits the services of this man, Balaam, because as I've said, he's well known for being effective at what he does. So he sends messages to Balaam and says, come to Moab and come and curse these people, these Israelites put a curse on them so that they won't be able to attack me. We already said yesterday that they weren't going to attack him anyway, but um, Balak has this plan. So he's eliciting the services of Balaam. I know it's a lot of bees. Um, So along with this request, he is offering generous reward. He's like, I will pay you, just come here and curse these people. Um, so the first time um, Balaam doesn't go with them, uh, the sec- and then Balak sends back more people um, to try and convince Balaam to come and do this curse. Um, he sends distinguished people. He sends, um, he offers a generous reward. He even says, I will do whatever you want. Just come and curse these people. And Um, Balaam is a interesting character. He's a man that knows um, some stuff about God. Um, He um, he speaks, he tries to speak to God and um, God tells him, don't put a curse on those people. They are blessed. Um, The second time God actually says to him that you can go with the people to Moab, but be careful and make sure you only do what I say. And what we see is that um, Balaam then goes on on this journey um, to Moab to meet the king, to meet Balak. And um, he goes under the pretense that he's following God and um, on the outward that he's only going to do what God says. But actually God sees the heart of Balaam And really, Balaam is quite a double-minded man. He's a man of compromise and he's not really a man whose heart is really for God. He's not really all in with God. And um, really in his heart, he's actually quite interested in cursing the Israelites. And he's quite interested in this generous um, um, payment which is on offer from the king. So when he's on the way, God is extremely angry with him, knowing really what the true intentions of his heart are, and God opposes him on the way. So what we're going to um, take out from this part of the story is just the importance um, and just how careful we have to be that our intentions, that our heart, that our actions align with God that we are not people who can be swayed um, to compromise, that we are not swayed by things which may be on offer, money, positions, um, many things which can be presented to us in life, um, but they would cause us to compromise our relationship with God. They would cause us to compromise what God has already spoken and asked us to do. So that's um, all we've got time for again today. Um, But let's just be reflecting about that and let's just be praying that we are a people that are always in alignment with God 
and what he's asked us to do and what his word says. Join me back tomorrow where we continue in this story. Thanks guys, bye.